Goodbye, AI box. You were loud, big, and hot, and you're being replaced. Because I've just plugged in this one, four MacBooks here, and I'm going to cluster them and run an LLM across all of them. But I've taken a few suggestions from the comments from the previous video I did about this, and I'm going to use not only a shared drive to host my AI models, which is going to be on this, but also I'm going to use a Thunderbolt bridge, and I'm going to show you how to set that up too. So what is this? Well, this is a NAS. This was a DAS direct attached storage so I can only connect it to one computer that wouldn't work for a cluster that's going to run an LLM but a NAS will because a NAS is network attached storage and speaking of networks this thing has a 10 gigabit NIC in it I can't use 10 gigabits here I only have 2.5 but it's still gonna be fast enough oh and this is Terramaster's brand new SSD only NAS so it's not hot it's quiet as a mouse it's almost silent in fact and because this is all SSD it's network storage that's insanely fast I was thinking about actually using this as my media server as well. But for now, AI, because that's more important. So what am I using as my driver to do the actual clustering of the LLMs? I'm using an open source tool called EXO. It's by EXO Labs. And I've recently made a video about this where I used three machines. Today, I'm expanding it to four machines, a MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM and three MacBook Airs with eight gigs of RAM, an M1, an M2, and an M3. Now, the problem that I saw when I was running it on three machines in the previous video, which I'll link down below, the model, no matter how large it is, needs to be downloaded to each machine. It's going to take a while. It's going to take up space. And that's what a NAS is good for. It's going to be a shared location for these models, which are pretty large. I don't want them taking up space, my precious, precious space. So I mapped an SMB folder to the NAS and I created a folder here called models and one for hugging face. Uh, you'll see that I already have a couple of models in there. That's because I'm going to point exo to this location how do i do that well i'm gonna copy this path so copy hugging face as path name and i'm gonna edit my environmental variables i'm gonna add this thing called hf home now this is not in exo's documentation but i looked through the code and i saw that they're looking for this environmental variable which you can set and i've set it to this which is volumes alex models hugging face so now that's pointing to my nas location now if you don't do this the typical location where exo places as these files, these models, is it automatically downloads it to a dot cache folder in your home directory. To view your hidden folders and files, you just press command shift period, and you can toggle that command shift period. So it would be under dot cache and then hugging face hub, and then the models will live in there. I don't have that anymore. I deleted it so that everything can live on the NAS. Now, of course, you need to restart your terminal after you change the environmental variables so that they can take into effect. And when you start EXO up, just by typing in EXO. This is, by the way, different from the previous video where you had to run the Python file manually. They've changed it. Now it's just one simple command. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I just thought this is a really cool project. EXO says one node. That means just this one machine is detected. And it pops up a chat interface in the browser using localhost 8000. You can get to it. And here you can select a model. We have Llama 31, 8 billion. We have Quen 2.5, 14 billion. Let's do this one. Llama 3.2, 1 billion billion. I'm going to say hi. Boom. And when I say hi, what it's doing is it's checking to see if the model exists. And it's going to see that the model does not exist. So it's going to download it. And it's pretty small because that's a really tiny model, but it's not going to add it locally. It's going to add it to my NAS. Anytime you download a new model or EXO downloads a new model, now it's going to use that HF home location, which is pointing to my shared drive. And that's really cool. So there it is. It's a 1 billion parameter model. And once it's done downloading, it's going to answer me. Hi, how can I assist you today? Now it's loaded into memory on this machine because there's only one node. So I'm going to write test. It's going to answer me. It's going at 40 tokens per second. Small models go much faster. Many more tokens per second can be generated on a tiny model. Whereas if it's a larger model, let's select uh, Quen 14B. Say, write me a story. Boom. It doesn't need to download anything because Quen is already on my NAS, but it might have a hard time with this one. And there it is. It's an error. And this is exactly the type of problem that EXO is trying to solve. If you have a machine, but it doesn't have enough resources, enough RAM specifically to be able to load this kind of model, a 14 billion parameter model is much bigger than the 1 billion parameter model. If it doesn't have enough RAM, it's going to share and split that model up intelligently among other machines. So that's 
what EXO is doing, and that's what we're gonna try and do today. Now, I've set all these up to point to the NAS. The other thing that many of you suggested to do is to connect these machines together, not through Wi-Fi, which they are, they are all on the same network through Wi-Fi right now, but instead of that, use Thunderbolt Bridge. What that means is I'm going to connect this machine, this is my MacBook Pro, and it has three Thunderbolt ports on it, so it makes sense that this will be the one that goes to the other machines. So I'm going to connect this with Thunderbolt cables to all the other machines. There's one, there's another one, and finally, a third one. Now, if you go to your system settings and network, you'll see that there's Wi-Fi there, but there's also this thing called Thunderbolt Bridge. And what I've done is I went in here and I went to TCP IP, and I've selected to configure the IP address manually. 192.168.10.1 on this one, 10.2 on this one, 10.3, and 10.4 on this one. And the subnet mask has to be changed as well. 255, 255, 255, zero. And now I can ping these machines from each other. So let's say I go ping 192.168.10.1. One. Boom. So it's talking directly to this other machine via Thunderbolt. Why is that better? Well, now it's a more stable connection and I can even do this on an airplane. Well, not the NAS part. I could theoretically connect the NAS to all these machines using an Ethernet adapter, right? And a Thunderbolt connection on the side. Each one of them has a Thunderbolt connection and I would probably need an extra one on the main MacBook Pro. So I would use a little dock, a little Thunderbolt dock like this or something. By the way, I linked to all these toys that I'm using using down below in the description if you want to check them out. This is my favorite little dock. It splits one Thunderbolt connection into three. Moving on, I got all these connected. When I run EXO on more than one machine, they automatically detect each other. So here I've got the MacBook Air, which is the little green icon. That means it's this machine. And it's detecting that there's another machine with a MacBook Air. Oh, I'm sorry. This one is a 16 gigabyte one. I missed smoke earlier. It's detecting that there's another one and it's splitting the work up. It's calculated how much RAM is going to be used on this machine and how much RAM is going to be used on this machine. And it says that there's two nodes now. Now I'm going to start it up again on this machine. And now it's showing me that I have three nodes right here. MacBook Air, MacBook Air, and a MacBook Pro. One more. Four nodes. That's my cluster. <laughs> Okay, so I ran into a little bit of a problem and it had to do with permissions. I finally figured it out. It took me a little bit of time <laughs> when you're dealing with four machines and trying to connect at the same time to the same NAS. Anyway, uh, permissions issue was figured out. And now not only does this MacBook Air run the model, but it runs the 14 billion parameter Quen 2.5. Here, check this out. I'm going to say, hello, tell me a story. I already did this. Of course, you can see it on the screen, but here you can see it working right away. 1.5 seconds to first token and it's going about 20 tokens per second not the fastest thing but again it's a slightly larger model so not too bad as that's generating though you can see right here this is the macbook pro the machine that everybody else is connected to you can see that that text is being printed out here as well all the nodes are working together to get this done i hope you enjoyed the story of starlight village i um i guess i enjoyed it i didn't really read it but Thanks for generating it. So that one is done. Let's try the same thing on this one. Let's refresh the page. We're gonna select Quen 2.5, 14 billion. And let's say, we'll just do something simple like, hello. Hello, how can I assist you today? That was nice and quick. Now let's take a look at the activity monitor and the memory usage. And this is a 14 billion parameter model, but you can see that the memory usage is still staying under that eight gigabytes. Nice, because most of the memory is being used on this machine, the 64 gig MacBook Pro. Let's see what we're using here. We're using 38 gigs of RAM out of the 64. I also have a bunch of other software running on this, so that's not going to give you an accurate picture of what exactly is running, but the MacBook Airs are just running this model. We got 7.15 gigabytes on this one and the memory pressure is staying under the orange. So that's good. All right, moving on to this machine, the final one, the one that we started with and the one that we're going to end with. This is the one that gave us the problem initially. We got Quen 2.5 selected. Tell me a story. Boom. <laughs> and there it is, generating a story, 14 billion parameter model running on M1 MacBook Air, and we're getting 22 tokens per second, not too bad. So you can see a difference in the number of tokens per second that's being generated. The M1 MacBook Air is giving us 23, the M3 MacBook Air is giving us 30, the M2 Max MacBook Pro is giving us 48 and 18 on the M2 MacBook Air. But what's really cool here is that once this is loaded into memory on all these machines, the time to first token is pretty fast. 
So I can go to any one of these and say, tell me a story, boom, and there it goes. It's telling me a story immediately. 0.87 seconds to first token. Now, what happens if you run two of these at the same time? Tell me a story here too. Boom. Okay. Okay. It's not going right away. Maybe it has to wait for that one to finish. I actually don't know what's going to happen here. I might have ruined this whole thing. This one stopped generating for some reason. So there's definitely some contention going on here. Oh, it's still going. It's going, it's adding, but it's slowed down to 9.4 tokens per second on this one. And this one is still thinking. Yeah, so it's able to do multiple queries at the same time. Oh, was I running two different models? That's not good. <laughs> Thought I was running Quen 2.5 on all these, but I accidentally just selected Llama 3.1. And I think what it's trying to do is load those two models at the same time on all these machines. And that's not gonna work so well. However, it's still trying. But I think at this point, you kind of get the idea of how this works. And this is a much more stable setup than I had previously done. And it's also a space saving setup because I'm running it through the NAS. I got to find a better spot for it than that. But it's actually, it could sit back there. It's super silent, so I don't even hear it. Now, it's not the cheapest NAS out there, but it's also not terrible. All SSD NAS has just recently started coming out. So TerraMaster's version pricing is going to keep going down. I think that this is a pretty good launch for an all SSD NAS at that price range. It's not bad considering all the hardware that you're getting in such a tiny package. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching, folks. You can check out the first experiment I did with the AI box in this video right here and my first experience with EXO right here. All right, see you next time. Have a good one.